Look at this thing, huh? I know. This is not what I was expecting. It's a okay, sensitive. back it straight out. Go ahead, put it all the way down, put it in reverse, but back it out. It's getting used to the throttle, though. That's all right. <laughs> Never drew it one of these. <laughs> That thing zooms. It does, that was in low. This is gonna be a fun project, building an exoskeleton for this ah. thing. This is the Blacksburg Rescue Squad UTV, which is the, it's what these vehicles are. It's a side-by-side, -side. people call them Razors, that's the Polaris version. This, I think, is a Polaris. Yeah, Polaris Ranger XP. They use this for, I'll have Tom tell you, but they mm. use this for like woodland rescue, mm. you know? campers, hikers. Tom, you mind telling the people what you use this thing for? This is Tom Rogers, everybody. Say hi, Tom. Hi. <laughs> what do you guys Basically, yeah. this is used for any type of rescue that could be out into the woods, could be on trails. It's also used in the town of Blacksburg when we have stepping out or we have football games. This is what we use to work through crowds or to work through the woods or whatever the media may be in which we cannot take a standard vehicle or an ambulance to, to take the patient and bring the patient out hopefully safely. And what the goal is now is to completely engage this so if we're off road and all of a sudden something slips, something whatever may happen, if the thing does roll, which I hope it never does, mm -hmm. it protects the people in the back. Because right now there is no real protection back here. Right. You've got one main hoop out of some As rectangular you can see, it's tube. Been, been bent a couple times. Yeah, come look at this, Walker. This oh, was, wow. someone caught a tree, huh? Yeah, we caught a tree. So this whole side been bent oh, back. Wow. This thing buckled. We tore some welds down here. And you've this been That's been re-welded about three times now. <laughs> yeah. So, I think uh, that's about two times too many. <laughs> yeah. So the goal is is to make it more in the shape of the, you know, the roll cage, right? And uh, minimize the clipping of trees. Well, the corners will be smoother. It'll be within the existing right. footprint. And of... we're still going to attach it here and here. Yep. We're going to buy a uh, 12 inch Star Life, and the rest of the material, the white, we're going to have to buy, but we already have the the yellow. Uh, Alex, in case you uh, get careless. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Oh, dang, that's right. Yeah. Just take care of my girl. Positive, I will. What's your name? It depends on if it's running or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Right. Well, let me get out of the way. I think this person wasn't happy with me. Oh, <laughs> they can get over it. All right, man, thanks. I'll update you. This time on Lift Arc Builds, we built an exoskeleton for a UTV for the Blacksburg Rescue Squad. Yeehaw. <laughs>so here we are day one on the the utv roll cage project and i'm going to start with a little disassembly and some tear down pull all the stuff off the back of this thing remove the placards that i need to start working on pulling the lights out of the rear bar here we got to pull these top four flashers out and these side flashers out of here and we'll chase the wiring all the wiring goes over there to that side <clears throat> and then we'll cut cut some stuff off and grind it smooth we got to cut all this off here, this is already coming off because of the, the hit up here with a tree. So that'll come off. The middle divider here is gonna stay, but everything else is gonna come off. This side rail here is gonna come off. And we will make an angle that sits here that will allow our steel cage to interface with the aluminum box. Because it's got a bolt together, you can't weld aluminum to steel. So yeah, here we go. We're gonna start with some disassembly.
got the lights pulled out. Everything was crimped and or soldered, so I'm gonna have to cut these wires and then solder them back together later. It's no big deal. We've got a circuit that runs these side flashers, and then we've got a circuit that runs these rear flashers. Looks like they were ready to add another light here, but they didn't. No grommet to protect the edge of these sharp holes, so that's interesting. This is how they did it. But we'll get the lights yanked out and coiled up over there, and then we'll cut this thing off. So I found some two inch angle in the rack and this is the plan as of yet. This one actually fits perfect. I don't even have to cut it. But because there's uh, doors right here, we're gonna let this angle sit up like that. Leaving this web of the angle here versus just doing a flat bar will add some strength. And this is where the stretcher slides. So if anything, it, it can maybe act as a guide as the stretcher slides in here. So that'll be nice. And then our tubes for the cage will sit here and be welded right there. On this side, we don't have compartments, so we can flip the angle down and weld our tubes here. And these angles will be bolted to the box. So we'll through bolt in a few locations and that will give us a steel base that we can start fabricating our steel cage from. But yeah, everything's stripped down. Got all the old stuff off. Looks good. This guy here was welded to the upright. So we're gonna take, use one of those bends and cut this back and return it back down to the bed here. Because this is where they clip on the top of the basket here. So this has to stay. We'll just take that elbow and kill it right here and cut this back. I'll probably do that first while there's nothing in the way, but I'm going to clean these guys up. I'm going to weld shut the holes that are here from whatever this was used for last and then uh, figure out where to make our holes for bolting. Figure out if we're going to have an issue in here. Nah, we'd be all right. There's enough space for a bolt to live in there. Onward. So <clears throat> there are base plates. Just went ahead and did a nice little chamfer at the end, clean it up. That one's gonna live there, and then this one's gonna live right here. Cut it to contour, match that slope. Wire wheeled it, cleaned it up. It's ready to weld to. Pretty close, getting these on. Once these are on, it's time to shift gears and do some tube bending. Start laying out our main hoop. Good progress. Slow but sure, wanna get everything right the first time. Okay, quick update. At the end of the day, it's a Friday, so I'm probably done here, but it's what we got. So we got two inch angle bolted to both sides. This side, the angle's up. I had to push these fasteners back from the midline because I had to dodge some stuff that's under here, but I got all six of the fasteners to connect and be bolted down. So this is for sure not going anywhere. They might as well consider that part of the structure now. And so I'll have the front hoop is gonna be here and then 36 inches back, the rear hoop's gonna be here, and those are two 
main hoops like you would have in a normal car roll cage. And then here is an intermediate vertical that'll be solid panel here, expanded metal over here. So I got all that mapped out, everything's looking good. And then on this side, we got the same deal. We got three bolts in the top, two bolts in the side. The angle is down because I didn't have anything in my way. And we'll have the rear hoop here and the front hoop here. So now I've got a steel foundation onto which I can build my steel roll cage that all bolts to the aluminum bed. You can't really see a difference right now, but that was a lot of valuable prep work. So now we can just start motoring. Next week, I will be mapping out my hoops, setting up my bender, and uh, hopefully not wasting a bunch of material bending it wrong. But uh, I have yet to do a main hoop. I've done two roll cages, but I bent everything except the main hoops because I got those pre-bent. I know how to do it. I know the math. I know how to measure it. I've just never done it. So I'm gonna bring you guys along for the ride. Time for the weekend. See you on Monday. All right, hello everyone. Update on the UTV roll cage build before I get stuck into it here and start bending some tube. I've got a few things to figure out. So these are the drawings that Tom so generously created. We've got driver side view, passenger side view, top view, and back view. So it's helping me, I'm using this to take notes and I'm also drawing my own stuff. So here is a drawing of the tube that's gonna be right up against the back of the cab. And then back here, 36 inches back, we're gonna have a tube that's taller than the main, main hoop, which will allow us to do this. So we'll have our front hoop here. This, if you imagine the cabs right here, the front hoops here, and then the top bars go up and back to a taller rear hoop. So I think I'm geometry wise, I'm gonna do the same, just the rear hoop will have uh, longer legs. But we're not gonna do a perfect square. We're gonna come, we do like an 80 degree bend here and then it'll be slanted until about here and then it'll do it the rest of the 10 degrees and come back in, <clears throat> which is sort of pictured here. You can see how it comes down, it's still slanted, and then a little bend here that straightens out the leg. Um, that is to keep the top corners of the, the cage inside the boundaries of the cab, because with the last one, they were having issues where these corners were sticking out past, and when they're going through the woods, trees and things, you can see where trees, like, they, they use this thing. There's rub marks and everything. So tree branches would be going down here and then they'd catch the main hoop. So we're gonna keep the main hoop inside the footprint of the cab here. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> this is a trick I learned from uh, Justin over at the Fabrication Series on YouTube. Um, put tape at critical points on your chassis to mark, it helps you measure things out. I'm using a JD squared Model 32 tube bender today. Uh, I've got my inch and a half die loaded up. It's like a six and a half inch center line radius. And a long time ago, I bent this 90 with this die. And I marked that cut right there, corresponds to the front edge of this die, which is a nice uh, measuring spot. So the reason I did that is I can take this 90 and hold it up to sort of simulate where I want my bends to be. And I can transfer a mark from that line to the chassis. And now I know where to measure, you know, where my bend stops and the straight starts. That's essentially what that line is illustrating for me. The easiest way to do a main hoop is to start from the center and work out symmetrically. So when I cut some of my raw material, I'll work up a total, you know, a total raw cut length based on all these measurements. And then I'll start in the middle and bend outward like this. You, know, you make this bend straight, make this bend. I, I fully realize that this is a lot of information. So uh, I'm trying to give you the technicals if you're curious about the technicals. So at the risk of over explaining things, I'm gonna get started. I'll try to explain as I go. But really figure out your raw length 
mark your midpoint, all your bend locations, and then just start bending incrementally. You know, leave a little extra on the end so you can trim it and fit. I did a bunch of measuring yesterday. I think I'm ready to start cutting. I may go lay something out in CAD real quick just for peace of mind, but that will only take like 20 minutes. Let's get to do a few more double checks and then we're gonna get to cutting. Okay, so there is software out there specifically for designing roll cages. I believe it's called Bentech, but I just wanna do a 2D layout just to double check some things. So I'm gonna fire up Fusion and just do a 2D drawing of this here. Uh, just establish some constants and make sure like my angles and everything makes sense. I know my bend radius and all that, so we will see. It's a six and a half inch center line radius. And I've got some measurements here. This is my roof line here. So this is the bed down here. And now I'm making my roof line. So now we can establish our boundaries. Um, just going in here and assigning some dimensions. So it looks like, you know, we want this to be 90. So with these two angles, it shows us how, what we need to do. So we can, you know, as long as from the top horizontal to the, the side piece equals 90, we can divide that in two pieces however we want. We could do a 95 degree bend and then a five degree bend. We could do a 90 and a 10. I'm kind of leaning more towards a 90 and a 10, but I think I'm gonna lay this out on the table and see, mark my straights, something of that sort. The one thing this doesn't exactly help with is start of my bends and end of my bends, but I can, I can translate that somehow. So I'm gonna print this. I'm gonna print this out. I'm just trying to be extra careful because this is the first main hoop I've built from scratch. And uh, I wanna get it right. I'm trying to use all the knowledge I've soaked up on YouTube and from other people to think it all the way through. So go back out in the shop and do some more thinking. All right, so here's where we're at. A lot of thinking, and now I gotta download this thinking into you guys. So I've mapped out my limits, so I know how, how high, the vertical height that I can't go past, and then where my top corners are gonna be here. I measured the top width of the top of the cab because I don't want my corners to poke out past that. So we establish our constraints first, and then using this Bendicator, clever name for this tool, and also by JD Squared. This Bendicator is matched with my die on my bender over there, sorry. And so I can use this. I've marked out where my bend starts are based on this mark here. And so I can use this to play with the angle and see where it's gonna telegraph my tubes. So I want it to be within a certain width up top, but I want it to get wider down here and I mapped out where I want it to land. So I can use this guy to put my corner in the right spot, but based on the angle, it'll push this leg in different spots and I can see where that makes the tube end up. So essentially I've landed on 80 degree bends here. I know where my start of the bends are and I know where my midpoint is. So I'm gonna cut a rough piece of tubing, mark my midpoint, make two 80 degree bends this way and that way, and then I'll lay it up on here and double check everything before I commit to the 10 degree bends that will be down here because 80 plus 10 equals 90 and that'll get me where I need it to be down here. That makes sense? You follow Steve? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 80 plus 90. 80 plus 10 equals 90. <laughs> Don't do that to me. <laughs> So I'm gonna go calculate a rough cut length for my raw material based on my three legs. And then I'm gonna cut it long and it'll start bending. All right, so now we gotta lay out our pipe. So I'm gonna find the midpoint first. Now 
from that midpoint, I measure out to my, the start of my bend. So I need to figure out what that is based on my template. So 19 and 3 quarters is the distance from the midpoint to the start of the bend. So I'm going to mark that now. All right, so we're ready to bend. First bend. Let's see how wrong it can go. Alright, so here's this, 280 degrees, and so what Steve and I were just talking about is essentially, it's going to be near impossible to show, but essentially the edge of that wooden board is my outer bounds. So really, I'm going to keep this straight section parallel with the pipe below it and ride it up the pipe like so until the gap between my elbow and the edge of the wood is what I want. You know, there it's touching, on up, there's a little less. So I'm gonna shoot for half an inch on each side to bring it in. I think that'll work. All right, so we're close enough for the job at hand. So I'm gonna cut our, my legs down now. This one's gonna get cut here, and this one's gonna get cut here. And then we'll go test fit it, and then one hoop done. Took a while, but I wanted to be really careful. I have a lot more confidence now going into this, and the second one should happen a lot faster. Another day, another dollar. We got the second tube bent up, uh, at least the initial, and now I'm mapping out the second bend to bring the 85 degrees around to the 90. So we just need two five degree bends lower. This one's been a little tough to get right in its own way because the way these are drawn, you have the, the, low, the low hoop and the high hoop, and the slanted members occupy the same plane. So, I had to extend the lines here on up so you can see where the old tube was and where this one is and this diagonal is on the same plane. So now I'm just trying to figure out where to make that bend so that it can line up sort of with the other one. But yeah, just uh, doing a little more thinking and then two more bends and then we'll mock this one up on the UTV. And then once the uh, once the main hoops are in, then the rest of it gets a lot easier because we're just cutting, cutting pipes, notching pipes. Most of them are straight connector pieces, except for the top ones. The top ones are gonna have this, this curve here, so it's gonna go straight and then curve down and be notched. But there's only three of those, and that's pretty easy to figure out. Because then we got straight here, straight here, straight, 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 yeah. So we're good, and then um, I've got the material ordered. I've got the expanded metal ordered, that'll be here tomorrow. I've got the one inch tube ordered, that'll be here tomorrow, and then mounting all the lights and stuff will just be a matter of making tabs and brackets and things and cutting them out on the plasma cutter and fitting them. So let's finish this tube, enough talking, let's do it. So we might be in a little bit of trouble because it's kind of hard to figure out. I'm sure a bunch of you out there watching uh, already know that I did something wrong or know what's wrong with this. But we've got this sort of double curve, right? We've got on the front hoop, we've got 80 degree curve and then the remaining 10 degree. And I made sure that the bend, this part stays straight because of how the Bambi, the, this basket needs to fit in seven and a quarter inches up. So I wanted this all to be straight. This back hoop is taller, right? So the bends aren't gonna happen in the right place. And I thought I'd map this out correctly, but if you look, uh, that bend and that bend don't happen in the same place. 
and that's completely my fault. This bend, I thought I measured this. This bend starts 12 and a quarter up. This bend starts seven and a half up. So now I'm at a crossroads where do I deal with this? Do I leave it? Or do I make another hoop? I've got two more bars and I think I'll still have plenty of material to do on my connectors. These are why main hoops scare me because it's a lot of material and if you get it wrong, it's kind of trash. And uh, hopefully not wasting a bunch of material bending it wrong. Although, you know, I'll be able to reuse that top straight section and whatnot. So I either rebend the back one or I cut the front one off and rebend that. I guess it depends on bend position. I, I think I'd rather, I'd rather have the first uh, eight and a half inches straight versus this one. So unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to remake that just because I want these bends to be at the same height and I gotta figure out what I did wrong. We're gonna have connecting pieces running forward and back. Therefore, these things need to be sitting at the same angle. How do I get the rear hoop to have the same geometry as the front hoop, but sit higher like this one does? I'm gonna need to think on this. My brain kind of hurts and with the camera rolling, I don't have full access to my thoughts. So I'm gonna put you guys down. I think I know where I messed up. So on the front hoop, those bends are 85 degrees. The rear one, they're 80. Cause by extending this up, I thought I needed, or sorry, it's 80 on the front and these back ones were 85. I thought I needed less flare out because this thing's taller. But what I need to do is actually do the rear bar just like the front. So 80 in the corners and 10 down here. But to make it taller, the straight section in between these two bends is where I get my height. And as I increase the, this straight distance, the horizontal, the flat horizontal needs to shrink because as these telegraph up at two different angles, the, the, the bends become closer together. So I think that's the move, is essentially remake the front bar. I'm gonna go draw this in CAD again, I think, because I've already drawn the front bar in CAD, and I just need to raise the height a certain amount, which will, will gain from those straight sections, and then this top horizontal will shrink to account for everything moving up. And that way, these bends, these subtle bends here, will be in the same place, which is important because we got horizontal going across here. Okay, I was probably rushing yesterday, and that's what you get when you rush. So, I've officially made my first piece of scrap metal. Luckily, I ordered four sticks of this stuff. Uh, plus, I think I've got another stick back here. Yes! Another piece there. Anyway, back to the computer to figure this out. Okay, so this is an interesting comparison. This hoop on the right was drawn using the same parameters as the hoop on the left, except that the top horizontal ends up five inches higher. And what I was curious to see, I kind of guessed. So over here, I inset these circles, eight inches, these seven and a quarter radius circles. I inset them from this uh, sample box to achieve that sort of slope that we're after. So over here, I was guessing, you know, we want, we want these, the bends at this location to be the same height, which they are. And we want the angle of this member here to be the same as this one here. And so if I measure the original one, we have a 94 degree angle, but over here we have 94.6, so it's close enough. So what this tells me roughly, as far as the dimensions go, I'm so sorry that I'm speaking in a, in a really broken, slow, stuttery way. I'm just really, I'm thinking this through as I, present it to you. And maybe I should have thought it through more before I present to you, but this is the reality. So essentially, I've pushed these bends here closer, an inch closer together in order to account for the fact that by extending this straight member, this top piece needs to shrink. So essentially, by the way I've dimensioned these compared to this side, I've lost an inch off the top and uh, I wonder if I change this now, will everything go with it? Yeah, 
So I think that should work. So really, if I bend, if I do the exact same thing I did for this, but shrink this horizontal member by one inch and then lay it on there and telegraph everything that way, I should be good. I hope that made sense to you. It barely makes sense to me, but I'm working my way through this. And uh, if I do more of this, it might be worth investing in like a bending CAD software or just being better. So I'm gonna let this marinate and stare at it for a little longer and uh, I'll go back out in the shop and put the plan into action. Everybody, here we are. My buddy Jake Freeland is over here at the shop. You'll be seeing more of him. He's gonna come do some work out of this shop for, for his business, Freeland Welding, and we're joining forces. <laughs> but anyway, he's here hanging out. You don't have anything better to do, I guess. No. But, so here we are, we've, re we've tested the rear bar, and uh, I'm much happier with this one. You can see the bends are in the same place, left and right, and we're five inches taller, it's level, and the space between the front and rear bar is the same no matter where you measure it. So everything's tacked in, super pleased, and now I can start working on horizontals. I think the next hardest thing to do is gonna be the top bars, which are this shape. Straight and then a bend down. I gotta map that out somehow. But that's what's next. All right, here's what we did to show, bring you guys along. Again, we're making this roof section here that the bar is straight for a bit and then a 45 degree bend and then it comes in and bird's mouths into the front hoop and the rear hoop. So what I did was draw this in real time. So we located one tube here, five inches up, and then one tube here, essentially a zero point. And we will have our tube go straight and then using the indicator we figured that we uh, we figured that this was a 45 degree angle so we set this at 45 and essentially put this on our tube line and situated it to where it intersects with the other tube we drew so then we have 26 and a half 25 and a half inches of straight and then our bend happens right there you bend at 45 and then the rest of it runs into here and we trim it and notch it makes sense sorry if it doesn't Watch how we do it. <laughs> Notch master from <laughs> JD Squared. So now we pretty much line this up to where it's halfway across the bit. And then we go to town. And there you go, it perfectly coped too. Right tool for the right job. When you're filming Tay, you have to lift your arm up high. Close enough. Okay. Tension, make sure we're at zero. Let's start cruising. out of pipe. <laughs> so that's it or not. 45 degrees. So all things being equal, we should be able to set it in here. Lower it down. We're actually a little past it, which is fine. That means I can just re-drill that and bring it back here. All right, and there's the result of all that math. Fits great. It's a hair short, but it could be that this tube is just out. So uh, very pleased with that. All the geometry looks like it should, and there's gonna be three of those. So those will snap up quick, and yeah, now this thing's really starting to take shape. Really starting to look like a cage. 
The back hoop fits great, looks really good, looks the same as the front hoop. Very, very pleased with this. So I know I keep saying this, but tomorrow, tomorrow this thing is gonna take shape. All the parts, the rest of the metal shows up. I, all the hard stuff now is done. So we're gonna start welding some tubes together tomorrow. Yeehaw, see you then. Quick update before the battery dies here. Got the three roof bars tacked in. We got all our base of the main hoops welded fully. And I'm very pleased with how it looks. It looks good from the front, looks good from the back. No glaring issues yet. Everything's vertical that should be vertical. Square that should be square. So now I'm gonna do two horizontal bars this way. We'll do a low bar, split one in the middle. Yeah, this thing's coming together. Status report, we've got our two chop horizontals mounted and I need to make an intermediate bar here. So I'm gonna mimic this exact profile here. So I left my mark on from when I originally bent it so I know where the bend will start. So it's nine and a half, 10 degree bend, whatever that is, and notch it to go around here and kill right into that because we'll have expanded metal on this half and a steel plate on this half and same over here. So actually over here, this uh, horizontal that I have not welded in yet probably won't be there. I'm gonna have to do the same thing, one that goes down like this of sorts. So that's what I'm cutting now. You go bend this 10 degrees. Looking good, there's the next intermediate bar. All those bends line up and happen at the exact same place. Real satisfying, so we'll weld that one in. It'll be two square bars instead of this continuous length square bar. There'll be now two, so one here, one here. So I'm gonna split that one in half, mount it in here, and then this side is done and ready for, ready for plates and expanded metal. All right, so slight change of plans. On either side of this thing, in this opening here, it'll be bifurcated and the front half will have a solid plate in it that they will vinyl with the that six-sided EMS uh, asterisk looking logo and some reflective tape and then this back half will be expanded metal. So instead of, instead of this piece, in here like that. That may go back in later, but I think the first thing I want to do is make this vertical. And then if we want a horizontal in afterwards, we can just do it in two halves. I'll do what I just did on the other side. Take some measurements here. We got nine inches from the midpoint here to our beginning of the bend. So, and then below that, I've got 24 inches. Yeah, so we're real close to finishing up the structure of this cage here. Once the hard, the main hoops were done, the rest of it's been really fun. Just sort of minor bends, mostly notching and measuring. And yeah, it looks pretty badass. It looks definitely, it's gonna be super safe and uh, quite striking to see it all together. And once it's powder coated and everything, be cool. We're still debating on a diagonal coming down this back area here. But other than that, it's pretty, pretty all right. So anyway, it's Friday here at the shop. It is five till five, and I think that's a good stopping point. 
I'm going to come probably mess with it a little bit this weekend and Tom's going to come on Monday to check the progress and um, you know give me the go ahead to keep going. Um, I have some questions for him anyway as far as placement of things. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in a bit. Bye. What's up, everybody? We are back on the UTV. I mean, I've been on the UTV, but I got a next chapter. So I am designing right now all the panels. This, the panels that are gonna fill in the gaps between the tubes on the sides of the roll cage. And I spent, I was here till about eight last night, drafting up uh, some of the, some of them, and I'm gonna bring you guys through the process to make something like this. So this is the panel on the driver's side front. The hole in it is for this light right here. There's one of these on each side at the, the front top corner of the, of the cage. And then this lattice work is what the customer wants. And we're gonna CNC cut these panels with holes to be bolted using these tabs right here. Come on camera. Hello, there we go. These tabs right here. That'll be welded to the pipe and then go into corresponding holes. You can see the plan here. Here's the driver's side rear panel. I've already got the holes and stuff laid out. The holes aren't spaced evenly because I wanted them to go into specific spots because it's going to have to be bent to follow the contour of the cage and I don't want the hole to land on a bend. So I had to move them around. Anyway, so I learned a pretty cool trick in Fusion if you want to do something like this. So I'm going to do this panel with you so you can see now that I've learned. So <clears throat> I've measured my openings and I'm accounting for my margins now. So my openings 15 and a half, I subtract a half inch, that's a quarter inch on either side. So 15 wide by 30, 32 and 3 eighths minus a half is 31 and 7 eighths. All right, so we've got our rectangle. That's the outer limit of the panel. And now I'm going to offset the border inward by an inch. And that's our margin where there's no lattice work. Uh, and that's for, to give strength and to be where all the holes go. All right, so we want this, oh, we also need to plot out, this one's gonna have a light in it. So I'm gonna delete this line, I'm gonna delete this line. I'm gonna make an overall slot and I've measured my hole, my, uh, the gasket here on the back of the light. And it is six and five eighths long by 2.475 tall. And now I'm gonna space that off the wall one inch here, and then dimension this off the wall one inch as well. Okay? And then we'll take lines and we'll finish our border like that. And now we're gonna offset this 0.375 or 3 eighths. And we're gonna trim what goes outside this border here and open it up like that. So now we've got this solid piece like that. That's all gonna be metal. And then inside of that is gonna be lattice. All right, so here's what you do. You finish the sketch and then you go to extrude. All right, I extrude the outside first. This is gonna be eighth inch metal. This isn't really relevant to the plasma cutting process, but it's how, it's, it's how I do it in Fusion. All right, so you've made an extrusion based on a sketch. So the sketch went away. So we'll make the sketch visible again. And now we'll click this interior body and extrude that as well. And you wanna make sure that when you extrude, I'm extruding the same thickness, but you go over here and say new body. So now we've got two different bodies it's all the same piece, but they're over here under bodies, you have body one, which is that one, and body two, which is that one. The reason that's important uh, will be made apparent in a minute. So now we create a new sketch in body two, and I'm going to center a diamond in this square. So I'm gonna draw two lines uh, at the midpoint, giving my center and I'm gonna create a center point rectangle that's 1.5 by 
All right, and I'm gonna select it, and I'm gonna go to move, and I'm gonna pivot it 45 degrees. And then here's the crucial part. Uh, you need to make two lines, at least for this pattern, that will be the axis along which the pattern is created. Okay, so I've made two little 45 degree lines there. I'm gonna finish the sketch. I'm gonna delete my midpoint lines and I'm gonna extrude this through to cut. Okay, so I've cut my diamond hole in the middle of the panel. Now we need to make a pattern with that extrusion, with extruded hole to make all the other holes. So here's where the magic happens. You go to rectangular pattern, you change this to features, and now I can select a feature from the timeline. So I select the extrusion that made the cut, and then I go to axes, I make this sketch visible, and I pick this axis and this axis. All right, and I've measured my spacing. So you just bump the quantity up big enough to where they'll go past. My spacing is 1.875. And then 20 here and 1.875. And what that should do, symmetric, symmetric spacing. Let me try that again. Rectangular pattern, features, object is this, axes are this and this. We'll be doing spacing 20, 1.875. 20, 1.875. And now if we do symmetric, symmetric, okay? I know that looks crazy right there, but that's filling in and watch this. When I hit okay, computing, I'm loading up my computer right now. Boom, look at that. So because the sketch I made that center hole with was exclusive to that second body, the interior body, the pattern I created didn't go any further than the extents of that body. How cool is that? Really stoked on that, on that uh, trick. So yeah, now to turn this into a DXF, you know, I still need to do my holes around the outside, but to turn this to a DXF, you create a sketch Create a sketch anywhere on this face, all right? You hit P for project, and you click this body, and you click this body, and you hit OK. But essentially, that's how you can create a sketch based on a, a three-dimensional model that doesn't already have a sketch. And then the fundamental is, once you've created that sketch, you save it as a DXF, save, and then we'll open up in route our panel and look at that this is a two scale DXF file created from a three-dimensional model that was created from a series of sketches and extrusion uh, methods so there you go that is how I'm going to be creating my panels for the roll cage and like I said I've already done a few but that saved me a lot of time because the very first one I did was this one. And I drew everything by from scratch. And by that I mean I drew a line from this corner to this corner and then offset that 3 8 and then spaced down. And I drew every single line and trimmed all the intersections by hand and that took about 30 minutes. Whereas you saw I just, how long have we been rolling on this clip? 11 minutes so cut it cut the time in half and for the bigger panel I would have it would have taken me an hour drawing them all manually because it's literally three times the the pieces so anyway yeah that's where we're at so I'm gonna keep rolling on this and knock through the rest of these panels then we'll load some eighth inch steel on the cutter we'll cut out our we'll cut out a small panel we'll probably cut out this one first because it's nice and small and then we'll verify that my inset for the holes works with these tabs. I just want to be able to bolt these tabs onto the panels and then hold the panel in the gap and tack the tabs where they land. And I've, I'm using, I'm going to use quarter inch fasteners and my holes are 
point three or a little under point three quarter is 0.25 so I've got a little slop and that way these tabs can move around and find their home I need to order some hardware I need to order some stainless hardware from McMaster car for this and for some other things so I'm gonna time-lapse the rest of this and then we'll throw some metal on the cutter but hope you enjoyed that little tip let's keep going <laughs> This panel here, small one to a test. I've got a big sheet of eighth inch over there, but I've got enough here to do that one. So we're gonna cut it. And what that'll tell me is how rigid these panels are in eighth inch and uh, if my tolerances are right. And this small one, well, it's small. So there's a lot less to lose. So let's try that. It has been a busy week. Um, so it's Friday night at 6.30. I'm gonna work another few hours and I'm probably gonna come in on Sunday because I'd like for this thing to be ready to go to the powder coater. Uh, first of next week, we've got our panels being uh, having been cut. Got all these over here, cut out, ready to go. I gotta bend them, you know, so where that bend in the, in the cage happens right there, I'd like to bend all the panels to follow that contour. I don't know that we'll do that with this break or just kind of putting them on the, hanging them off the edge of the table, you know, and, and heating along a line and then just pushing them over. But <clears throat> I'm using my Everlast TIG and coming over all the, all the joints and welding them fully. I'm trying to keep it clean. I like TIG welding pipe just because it's, it's really satisfying and it, and it looks good when it's all done. So fully welding all this and then panels go in and then roof panel goes on. I think I've already probably said this to camera a few times, but you know, gotta make brackets for the light, so I'll do some CAD work on Sunday and develop those. And then a shelf, so there's a lot. A lot that was added. The customer, the customer added some things, added a shelf for a defibrillator, which will sit right in here, this way. Uh, added the roof panel and added these plasma cut panels as opposed to the expanded metal that was the plan before. That's okay, change orders happen. It's, you know, it's more money toward the shop, but it's more work we gotta do. But it'll look really cool when it's done. These, these panels, 
these panels are gonna be pretty trick. You can see that. There's a margin all around, you know, that'll be evened out, but really stoked on how these, how those came out. Hopefully my tab mounting system works out. But anyway, I'm gonna keep welding. Just wanted to, uh, you know, when, when there's a bunch of other people in the shop making noise, it's hard to pull the camera up and talk to you guys and let you know what's going on. So yeah, anyway, speaking of talking, that's quite enough of it. Let's get back to work. You wanna go home? You wanna go home so bad. I know, but I just fed you. What is this on your nose? All right, what's up nerds? I made these spacers uh, to help me locate these panels. So basically half inch plus eighth equals five eighths. And that basically positions an imaginary plane right inside. So basically I clamp, all my gaps are the same. So if I clamp two, two of these bars in any location where a panel has to go and then bump the panel up against it, it'll locate the panel perfectly. I'll get them clamped in and you can see what I'm talking about. That will locate the panel in the right spot. And then I just gotta space it side to side. <clears throat> so with those pieces in, I basically push the panel up to it. You can see in here, I've got angle, eighth inch, five, uh, half inch. And so clamping these across the tube, like here's my math, you know what I mean? Two tubes, eighth inch piece, I want it to be centered. So that line there under the circles represents this piece of angle. And I worked out the spacing that I want, 11 sixteenths. I pulled a sixteenth off just to make it easier to do, five eighths. So these things are spacing the face of the panel five eighths away from the front of this tube here. Meaning I clamp these on, I push the panel up to it. I know that that panel is located directly at the midpoint or thereabouts on this tube and now I can tack it in because this one I've already got my tabs uh, bolted in place. So I can tack, tack them in and then uh, unbolt the panel and the tabs will still be there and they'll be located in the right spot. Make sense? Good.
Okay, we finally have the side panels in, and boy, do they look cool. Um, quite pleased with how they've come out. All the tabs are fully welded on one side. This side's got the full length side panels coming together. That's a big hurdle out of the way. I know I haven't, haven't been narrating a whole lot as of lately just because I'm under pressure to get it done, trying to knock it out, trying to stay focused. Just trying to set up the cameras and, and, and get right into work. So this thing has to be done today, hell or high water. Not only for my own purpose, but for you guys, all that's left is making light brackets on this top rail for these, these reflectors, these guys, these, something like that. I'll make a custom enclosure for those. Uh, these guys go in those holes, doink. I've got to build a shelf for the AED defibrillator thing up here. And I've got to got two more of these bins to put right here that will then give me a mounting surface for the uh, roof panel. So the roof panel I will do last just because it will fully enclose everything. I also need to route, uh, weld some conduit up in here and along and figure out the path for all the wiring for the lights. You know, it sounds like a lot. I guess it kind of is, but it's all right. Customer's coming tomorrow to give the final okay before it goes to the powder coater. Therefore, I want to have it finished tonight. Oh, I also did, uh, we also got to do some tabs to incorporate these cab mounts to the cage. So I was playing around in Fusion this morning, cutting some plates. I think I'll do something of that sort there. Um, I've got my, you know, two bolt holes mapped out. And so I'll just put a slight bend in that and cut this back to where it, it intercepts the, the tube like that. Do one there, one there. I'll just make the plate touch the tube by bending it. And then I haven't checked this side, but we're after the same, we're after the same thing. So, you know, that one can just cut, be cut down so that it sits flush like so. And then same thing up here. So that's a nice size. I cut two of these out already. I'm gonna cut two more. And then that one front corner up there will have a, a bump out with a circle so that this carabiner on the Stokes basket has somewhere to click into. That's not gonna make sense until you see it. So yeah, this process of bolting the tabs to the panel first and then really wrenching them down so they don't move, and then test fitting the panel and sanding off, grinding off material from the tabs until the panel slips right in. Uh, worked really well. I got faster and faster at it as I did it, and my welds got better. You know, I TIG welded it, and the beauty of a TIG welder is that you can weld in really tight, confined spaces. You know, I didn't want to weld the panel to the tube, I wanted to weld the tab to the tube, but the tabs bolted to the panel, so I only had little tiny gaps to weld in. And, you know, we run, I was running a little extra stick out, running a gas lens so I could have some stick out on my tungsten, and I could, I could feed that right in there and get real close. So anyway, onward and upward. I think next thing I'll do is make these, make these radiuses here. Again, just like that but right here. So let's do that. New welder day for Jake here at the shop. Look at Jake's that thing. Good too. Hell yeah. I'll make you a deal on that rack, $4.99. <laughs> okay, <nigga. laughs> So what do you get for your four and a half thousand dollars? You got the... MIG, stick, ACDC tube. Got your mid gun. Yeah. You're gonna go Tweeko style though. The shitty new Miller. Actually, I had never seen that one. That's doesn't, not the same one. It doesn't look bad. It's like mine, just a little smaller. Mine's like the heavier duty one. You might have to go Tweeko. We'll see. I don't know, man. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't know. I like Tweeko so much. Yeah. More. You always keep that. I as do kind of like the ergonomics of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little more bent. Well, it's about the same. I've been wanting to play with one of these for a long time. I want to see if, if it's, because it'll do a lot of automatic thinking for you. I want to see how close it'll do, how good it is on, on aluminum AC TIG. Yeah. Because I've spent months, almost a year now, really fine tuning my settings on that machine, which is all right. manual. I want to see what it does when you just go eighth inch aluminum and this size electrode and this kind of gas, go. Yeah. 
and, yeah. and see what it comes up with. Who knows? Like their 255 has the same kind of feel, but the auto set. That shit never worked. Right. Well, how day. Oh, here it shows you how to use everything. All right, I gotta quit getting distracted. I'm gonna get back to <laughs> back to work. So fucking close. Just fit. Yeah, it's filming right now. Does it fucking fit yet? Bleep that out, Walker. You already are. That only took two hours. All right, viewers, well, that's what I've been trying to get right for the past hour and a half is this curve here because the roof plate is gonna need two radiuses, radii, to come down and weld to. So the only opening we'll have is this area right here. This will be covered with a panel across the top, over the front, and then same over there in between those two pieces. So I'm gonna make sure these two are the same distance forward from the main hoop, tack those in, double check my measurements for the roof panel, and then we'll load a 14 gauge sheet on the plasma cutter. Draw that up in CAD, cut that out. Although, before I do that, I'm gonna evaluate the, uh, the shelf situation here for the AED, the defibrillator. It'll live right here, full length shelf. Wanted to get all this other stuff in, all the stuff that I know I needed, so that now all the structure exists and I know where I can tack to and support from, or something like that. I'm about to misuse my bender. This bender, the JD Squared Model 32, is, can bend anything so long that you have the right die. This particular die is made for inch and a half DOM tubing uh, with a six and a half inch center line radius. Meaning, if you did a complete circle with it, from the center point of the circle to the center line of the tube, would be six and a half inches. What this die is not for is one inch square tubing. However, I am up against the wall, and I can't for the life of me think of another way to impart a 90 degree bend into some one inch tubing right now, seven at 7.30 at night. So I've already tested it off camera. I was able to bend a 90 with some jerry rigging into some one inch tubing successfully and rather smoothly. What did happen though is I sort of hurt you see those two little marks there? I'm, I'm hurting the die. This is the follow bar. The follow bar goes in here, uh, and that's what holds the tube against the die as it's being pulled around. So effectively what's happening is as the square tubing is getting bent around, you know, this, this does not fit over here. So instead of it distributing the load all the way around the radius of the die, it's really focusing it in those two points. So, there's a very real chance that doing this again will damage the die in such a way that every subsequent tube I bend in the bender has marks on it because the die is no longer smooth. I realize how sacrilegious this is, but I need a 90 and I need it now. It's my money and I need it now! So, I only gotta make one bend this is for the, the piece of one inch. You know, you saw me try to do it with CNC plasma cut parts. You saw me try to do it while heating, heating it and bending it around a die. None of it worked well enough for me to be satisfied. This results in a smooth bend, but I'm damaging my equipment. Hopefully not irreparably. So here we go. I will I'll load it in and show you what I have to do to do that. Up. 
All right, so I'll load it in here and then give you a close-up of how janky this is. Janky is a technical term to explain something that's not done as well as it possibly could be. I have since polished this tube as smooth as possible to give it the best possible chance of not damaging my dye anymore. I know there's some people screaming at their computers right now. Don't do it, don't do it. Just wait, buy the right tool. All of you are right, but there is no time. For I am just a man talking to himself in his own shop at zero hour on the build. So what is happening here is this piece, this piece normally clamps in the pipe, but we're not using pipe. So I've had to put some spacers underneath, put some spacers on top, put a spacer here, and put a spacer here to keep that collar in the right spot. Because if it moves up and down, it might tilt the, tilt the tube this way. So now we will lock this down. It doesn't like it, doesn't like it, doesn't like it. Okay, now we'll bend. We'll see how it happens. So I've drawn, I've drawn a box on the table showing where I want this thing to fit and it should work. If I use the edge of the table as my reference, we want to cut this here and here. At least that one I can cut in the saw, that one I'll cut by hand. And now the big reveal, ta-da. That will go just like that. And we'll notch this to go around the tube, we'll weld it here, weld it there. And this is gonna give us a nice surface for the, uh, the Stokes basket to be clamped to. So that's kind of the whole purpose of this thing. All right, I'm gonna notch, notch this just vaguely. And uh, yeah, then we'll get to welding. make this piece because I cut it too f***ing short because I don't know how to use levels and squares. Time is just ticking by too. Instead of doing that, I'm going to weld back on the piece I cut off. Oops. I'm going to weld this piece. Where is it? There it is. Doink, doink. Weld that back on because this isn't a roll cage per se, and I can do that. Normally I wouldn't be able to do that, but I'm doing it. Guys, I made this part and I'm so excited about it. It holds the, uh, the lights. This is the gasket back of the lights. Look at that. That goes on there. And this goes like that. So I can mount a light on the tube. Let me show you how I made this at 10.30 on a Monday night. <laughs> uh, all right, folks, here's what we did. I made this part in Fusion based on thoughts. The first thing to go off of was this light. So these are the lights that were on the back of the existing uh, roll bar on the UTV. They're little flashers. I think red and, and uh, white, maybe just red. Uh, but really, the only thing to know is that this is how they interface with the world. You've got two holes and a, and a slot shape. So 
the two holes and well so I drew to two holes and then a hole for the wire so that if you go back to the screen that is what this face is okay uh, and then I wanted to just bend it, you know, make it out of a single sheet of metal. So we designed this part in the sheet metal space in uh, Fusion 360. Uh, these notches here on the sides are for the inch and a half pipe tube, the roll cage tube. So this notches over the roll cage tube. And then we've got a hole right here for the wire to come out so it can the wire from the light goes in here in the back and then out this hole and then it can run along the uh, roll cage so this thing fits and works great and what I need to do really I don't know this was just such a cool I mean listen it's 10 30 I've been having a few beers just to get by whoa it's almost 11 it's really cool the sheet metal space I'm sorry, let me start over. The sheet metal space in Autodesk Fusion is really cool, particularly if you work with sheet metal, duh. But being able to design, you know, like I knew what I wanted this 3D part to look like, but I have to start with flat metal. So with the help of a plasma cutter, we can very quickly, plasma cutter and a, and a metal bender or a break, we can pretty quickly go from flat material to a three-dimensional object so long as that it can be achieved with flat planes and bends. So this worked out very well. I made one, here it is. I'm gonna make three more and show you how to do it. So I've already exported my DXF. So really just copy this and paste it three times. Okay, and then situate these parts. Output this to file, and then we'll go cut these out, and I'll show you how I took them from flat to that. There's the rough part. And now what I do is slice the gap with the cutoff wheel to remove that clearance. And then I'll bend the sides the rest of the way. See, they're a little wide now. But yeah, man, that's how you take a 2D piece of metal, make a part. This brake isn't technically rated for 11 gauge, but by scoring the line like I did, like that, it'll, it, effectively means that I'm bending less metal. So, yeah, how about that? So I just ran a cut, I just ran a cutoff wheel through these corners, so I should be able to complete the bend now. Now it is perfectly square, and I can weld these corners up, and there it is. That is a light box. So I'm gonna make two more of these, We'll mark them out on the pipe up top. We'll tack them in place, and then we're that much closer to going home. to join us today. We have so many exciting things happening in the shop. <laughs> oh. Wow. Some ASMR sounds. That's what I spent uh, last night doing. <laughs> wow, that. Wow. Oh, really? <laughs> no, this. Oh, uh, yeah, literally. <laughs> Not euphemistically. <laughs> Look how terrible my lathe tools are. Ooh. Turn this, what it looked like before and after. Anyway, hi, up to speed real quick. Here's the cage as it is. 
Today's the last day we're working on it. All right. So it's all gotta be done. Quite pleased with the body of the cage. I like my light boxes, although I was struggling to figure out how to finish them until just recently, I got a tool that is neat. Mm -hmm. We will be attaching the lights with riv nuts. Ooh. These are riv nuts. Ah. So you can drill a hole in a thing and then lock this piece in there and you've created a threaded hole where there wasn't one. Without having to tap. These lights here and these shrouds, I just have two bolts that hold them on. And so that's what these are, right? But they're blind, I can't, meaning I can't get to the backside. Ah. So what I'm gonna do is use these tiny little 1024 riv nuts, right? There we go. Mm -hmm. So we'll drill this, these holes out and then we'll pop two of these in and then we have a threaded hole that's small enough to accept, to accept a fastener that can fit down in here. Mm. That's the problem. So the lights will go on. On the back side of here, there'll be some conduit for the wiring to be threaded through. All the wiring will be going to the front corner there, which means this light comes over, that light's there, and these four lights get daisy chained together and go that way. And then that part will be done. <clears throat> I've got a cut out right here. We put this piece of tape here to show where we want. We want to be able to you grab this part of the bar as you get up. So I'll need to cut out ah. like a portion of this to allow room for your hand to mm -hmm. go through. So I'll try to make, find a way to make that look clean. Still need to cut the roof panel, but that'll be pretty quick. And then that gets welded on. This is just laid there so to give us an example. Mm -hmm. And I've got three of these cab connector plates. Fa oh, fabricated and welded. The two on the other side are fully welded and this one is. And that of course bolts the cage to the existing cab. Mm -hmm. This one's not welded yet because <clears throat> I need to design something in here that it either attaches to this, this, or both and goes that way and creates a, like a ring oh, because we're gonna hook. use this carabiner to lock it in. So small little piece to design and cut on the plasma and then that'll be done. Gonna widen these holes, make sure all the lights can be installed, wiring, conduit, and like two brackets, and the roof panel. Whew. Not too bad. No. It's just a bunch of small stuff. The roof panel is a little bit bigger, a lot of linear inch, inches of welding on the roof panel. But it's okay. It's 11.30. This is my only job today. Tom is gonna come tomorrow morning and uh, give me his good graces before we go to the powder <laughs> coater. All right, well, I'm gonna start with uh, the light pods because it seems fun. Oh, mm -hmm. one thing I didn't show you yet is this. So, yeah, right, there is one more thing I did. Mm. There's gonna be a shelf right here for an uh, AED or defibrillator and mm. like, monitor mm -hmm. device that sits up here. So there'll be three of these, bing, 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 a shelf on top. But last time Tom came by, I expressed my concern with we want 12 inches up here, which mm -hmm. means you know, patient's gonna be laying in here and there's not a whole lot of clearance. Yeah. These are welded there, that's kind of a thing. So what we're gonna do instead is have three pipes welded on the uprights, smaller pipes, this diameter, two inches out like that. And then mm -hmm. these will slide over those and then there'll be a pin right here, something like that to lock, lock that in. So the whole shelf, can be removed. So I've cut three two inch sections of this, notch that the same as I've notched this, mm -hmm. weld those on, weld these on, sorry, and then the shelf, you get it. Mm -hmm. I've explained it three times now. <clears throat> so yeah, none of it's complicated anymore. It's just time. So mm -hmm. we're gonna turn some music on. We're gonna get a good montage going. So get a hot cocoa mm -hmm. and some, uh, boiled liver <laughs> and have a nice meal and strap in because it's going to be a lot of fun.
Okay, viewers. <clears throat> this was the light off the back of the cab, and it is now being mounted in the corner here in the cage. So I want to make a plate that goes in here with a hole to mount this light. So what I've done is I used the knowledge of having of this being a six and a half inch centerline radius bend to create a circle. I just made this because I wanted to test. I can set this in here and I know that five and three quarter inch radius will fit perfectly inside this tube. So I'm gonna use that knowledge to create a plate that goes in here, probably like football shaped to fit this way and this way with a hole to mount this light like so. Okay, that's what's happening. Try to keep up. pieces I cut out and this is what they're for. The ovals is how I will cap these like that and we'll just weld that like that. This piece is going to go here and mount the light that was on the back of the cab to that and this piece is going to be retrofit into this panel like that to create a relief so that where that tape is, we want people to be able to grab this, this bar as a handle to get up. And right now you can't fit your fingers in there. So I should have designed this into the panel originally, but you know, I took inspiration from, from this here and we're gonna, Pretty much just lay that on there, trace where it goes, cut out the missing parts, weld it in, and uh, call it good. Just because I want to finish my train of thought here, I'm going to go ahead and weld this in first and bolt that light on. And then we will uh, probably go back to the shelf so that I can finish that thought process. And then I'll do that. So I'm going to through drill these guys for the inserts. So it's gonna be a 5 16 pin. So I went up one size is a 21 64. And I've got my fixture set right here so that I can slide each pipe in and the flat face of the mitered cut will index up against this square here. So I can ensure all three pieces get set in the same place. And May May just came to join. Hi Miss May. Now, engage roof panel. Now, now what? All right, there we go. Let's go back to the shelf.
guess we've achieved what we wanted. There you go. And hold. What a pain in the butt. If only I'd have drawn that when I originally cut the panel. It's okay. One more thing figured out. says it should. I don't believe it. I think it should fail. It has every right to fail. But if I can get it in, right? Not exactly smooth, I will say. I'm gonna have to file it down. But we're getting there. It's a step in the right direction. What's up nerds? It's Christmas Eve and we're gonna finish this roll cage. This is the end of week three after what I thought was gonna be a one week build. But you know, shit happens, it's all good. It's not worth talking about it, just finish. So we're gonna finish the roof panel. Just got a lot of sort of going over to do, making sure all the welds are complete and the uh, weld balls are ground off or chiseled off. Some small little brackets and pieces to make, but this is the last day. It's got to be. Let's make it happen. Uh, if you've made it this far in the series, Walker's telling me that this is one of the longest videos we've ever filmed. We've got like over three hours of, well, three weeks of footage, but it's going to end up being like two hours something total runtime. So this is either the end of a very long part one or the end of part two coming up. Thanks for sticking with us. Let's make some noise. smooth as necessary. We're gonna move. Almost done, folks. I'm trying to finish in the next hour or so. Just gotta make a bracket up front to hook the Stokes basket to. Two brackets over here to hook the basket to. Fully weld this shelf. And then that's pretty much it for the metal. I may rethink some conduit, but 
Yeah, like I said, I'm trying to wrap up in an hour. It is Christmas Eve, and uh, trying to take next week off still, see how likely that is. It might be that I come in on Monday and just bring this to the powder coater. Oh, very, very looking forward to, to that. Okay, let's finish strong. Marty from Blacksburg Rescue Squad, and they are going to test out the basket here. Hi, Tom. Marty. All right, here we go. Go ahead. This is not normally how you would load a patient. No, the patient wouldn't be able to but get in on that. I don't want to make there. Tom, you know, no, over exert no, himself, put me I, in. There. I haven't had dinner yet tonight. Just lay your ass down. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, that's the right humor for the future, for sure. All right, all right. See, that was the concern right there. Now, ho hopefully you don't uh, have a scary dream and wake up real fast. Yeah, right. Now, the problem is you may end up with a really robust person. Right. <laughs> and that's going to be the main concern is a robust person. Well, what about then you drag this behind on a rope? Yeah. <laughs> is that insensitive? I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> We're sorry, Patty. Yeah. yeah. One, uh, one thing I'll, I'll suggest, though, right here on these edges, maybe yeah. we can put some of that edge protector on there. That, totally. That just that way, there's no risk of anybody. Yeah, so they don't slice lift your head up and there. beat it. Yeah, somebody, you know, Narcan, then they go boom, boom, right? <laughs> That's been my fear with the shelf kind of yeah. the whole time. That's why we have, in the beginning, wanted it removable, but then the fear is, will it ever get to the point you yeah. just can't take it off? Yeah, yeah sure. and pretty easily, I think it would. Now, the, uh, the one thing I was wondering about, and that's where uh, it was just kind of, you would feel claustrophobic in here? That's part of part of the reason I climbed up in here. I'm not a great person to test that because I climb around in caves, but yeah. but uh, um, it doesn't feel too bad. It feels pretty eerie and open. Like especially you look over here, it feels very open. I can see Tom. You know, well that'll freak you out. Then he's by And then you know he's on. Yeah. Then you'll see the monitor start. <laughs> he's hallucinating. Yeah. You guys already saw Santa. Him, didn't you? Whatever you got in there is good. Keep feeling Santa. Like, no, but, <laughs> Santa. Now I got yeah. my haircut. Cool. Yeah. All right. Do you feel uh, cared for? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cared for. Yeah. Hold on, his heart stopped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, I was gonna say maybe a handhold so the patient can roll out of here, but I don't think that's. No, you're not gonna come out that way. Exactly. Yeah, you'll be loaded in and out like a piece of bread in a toaster. Yes. Yeah. But yep. see how the light's gonna get mounted? Yep. Yeah, I screwed one in. Now, with the intent is all the wiring is going to come into the tube and all the wiring we've done inside the block. And Tom, I can add any little chunks of tube in that corn front corner if you deem it helpful. Plenty of that conduit left over. You want to throw one right here just to... Yeah, if you don't mind, I would still put one right here. Yeah, that's fine. If you don't mind, I think so because at least it will keep it out of the way. Yeah. But like I said, you, if, you, if you haven't ground these yet, make sure when you put them in, they're, they're kind of loose. Yeah. So when you pop the thing in, it will actually lock it in. Right. And if you don't mind me suggesting, once you grind to put the gasket in, then pop the light in to make sure it still pops in. Totally. Yeah, I'll remove about an eighth of an inch of material all the way around, giving okay. a quarter in each. That should, that should do it. Then. Yeah. Curious question, Tom. Huh? Uh, just, just a question for you. Go for it. Were we thinking about wiring and charging things from the bottom? No. Okay. No. It'd just be, um, it's not necessary. I this light curious. with the interior lights and uh, the red lights, that's it. That's just the backup light. Like that's a rear load light. I guess, yeah, I could switch that one independently. Plenty of room in here. I, mm -hmm. I could add a, no, you don't want to take up any more no, space I don't think in it here. Is. If you did anything, I would put it in here. I can put a little curved gusset in there if you want to drill a hole later for yeah, a switch or something. Yeah, why put a gusset in here? Okay. So I'm glad I'm filming this. I'm this taking way, notes. This way, I, the wire could come down into the gusset. Yeah. And then from there, it would have to come back up into the tubing. Cool. But we could do that. 
I was, yep. I was almost thinking about a lip here, but a lip would keep make it really hard to get the monitor up there. So. Yeah, we, we were trying to get as much height as possible. Yeah, I agree. And I, I wouldn't want to go any lower with the shelf after getting in there. No, well, believe it or not, we gave it an inch more. Yeah, we slammed it up into the ceiling as much as we could. Okay. Cool. And if we get it back and everyone dislikes it, we can always have it cut out and touched up. Sure can. If the, the worst case scenario, if, if somebody said that they didn't like it, I would still recommend we keep this shelf here, but maybe we cut out the front section here with the head the Well, there's a thought. Worst case scenario. Just to... Yeah, but I, I personally like this. But, yeah. Well, Sid wanted it there so that you could be sitting there watching it. Yeah, and it's a great location. It's actually the perfect location to sit here and use the model. So this is ideal. Well, fellas, other than some small things, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm for it. I'm saying let it go. I'll be what to Elsa. Let, let it go. go. Let it go. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I mean, just touching up like the corners and stuff like that. Yeah, I'll do like an ergo ergonomic pass on that shelf. Make sure. I wonder if you can. Just bend it all the way bend in. Bend it in. And yeah. Just, like all the way across. I don't know. But we might lose some rigidity if we do that. But yeah. No. It was the reason I bent it initially was because I thought I was going to have to rely on the strength of the sheet itself. Because when it was still removable, I wanted, you know, a flat piece of metal will bend. and But if you put a crease in it like that, it makes it rigid. So I bent that for the mobile shelf. So theoretically, if I'd have known, anyway, if I'd have known the shelf was going to be welded, I probably wouldn't have. Put that bend and i could just cut it off actually that lip all yeah, the way but then you got another edge up here yeah but you i guess you either protect that edge or you protect the other edge i guess at least this way there's nothing to catch the monitor when you go to put it that's what i was thinking if you bend it back so that it's at the same angle as this tube right uh -huh. yeah, now you've got a nice like rolled edge oh, no, i got i would do it with a hammer <laughs> there you go dude whatever looks good yeah like that's like it's not really even structural, like you said. So whatever makes so it. So I'll just round, make a nice round there and yeah. over there, and yeah. like that stuff that you can put on the edge of doors for vehicles. Just get the industrial 3M stuff. And that's can, what I was talking about. We can line all the edges. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, we have. Oh my God. We have so much like crap at work. I, I bet. work at Volvo trucks. So like. Oh yeah. yeah just grab a roll of it. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. grab a roll of it. Yeah. That and zip ties, most common parts. In the <laughs> yeah. Well, then you know what you got to bring back to the station. Yeah. Seriously. Okay. Well, if we're content, then it's a go. Let's do it. All right. Well, as soon as the, if the powder place is open on Monday, I'll bring it on Monday. I'll tweak some things. Yeah, just tweak those two openings and maybe the, the plate here and the tube there and then let her go. Cool. Of course, and the place is only a block and a half that way. Well, I do. I'll drive this well, just there. Just walk it down there. I'll drive this there. <laughs> Have them pull it off of the forklift. <laughs> You told me to test drive it. I haven't yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm I've not been very good. I'm not telling you not to. <laughs> I'll slap my, my license what, plate. What is the, the old phrase? What happens here stays here. Yeah, that's what they say about Roanoke. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, I will say you put this one up right down. See well, you know why I did that. I don't know. Uh, I had a reason. I'm joking. Oh, because the wire. Uh, either the yeah, it must have been the wire. I was hoping that it would stay up and out of the way. I'll just, just I'll take this plate off and turn it around oh, for no, you. Yeah. <laughs> well, holy Santa Claus snow! <laughs> I don't want to say it out loud because I almost don't believe it. Mm -hmm. But I think we're done. <gasps> It's like when you don't want a dog to know that you are uh -huh. talking about treats, so uh -huh. you spell it out. Yeah, we are D O N E. We are D O N E. Let me give you guys a walk around. Uh, today's big accomplishment was the roof. It is on and smooth and fully welded. Quite pleased. I've made these two basket hold downs. So the Stokes basket here actually has a way to be fastened. Which is important because there's probably an injured person in here. And you don't want to make them more injured through their rod. <laughs> so if you look here, look down here. Ah. We've got two little metal tabs. And way up front there, we've got an eye hook with a carabiner. So what you do when you put this in here is you go like this, and you go like that, 
And then you go. This is still being refined, but the idea is. Look at that. Clippy clip. So the pa passenger. <laughs> flip around. Uh, we've got our shelf up yonder. This will. We decided to weld it in place, and it's very much in place. Up there will be the, the AED, the, the, the uh, defibrillator and the uh, vitals monitor and everything. We've got our four lights, we've got our rear scene light, we've got cab mounts on all four corners. Boom, boom. I think that's it. <laughs> this one we cut out this little uh -huh. part here so that you've got a handhold. So that's fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> it is literally 3.45 on Christmas Eve. And we just finished Santa's sleigh. <laughs> Dude, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys more than you know. I hope you appreciated all the work that Walker and I have put into this giant, massive episode. I'm exhausted. I'm at the point of uh, mental breakdown. So, it's whiskey time. Woo! Subscribe, like, comment, thank you. Uh, this build was all for all the fabricators out there. I'm very proud of what I've built here. I used pretty much every trick in my own book and I operated at the limit of my skills for about two and a half weeks straight. So, very pleased. Shop Saver allowed us to do these amazing CNC cut panels, you know, used a lot of roll cage bending experience in this one. Some electrical wiring, automotive wiring experience. I don't know, just kind of took everything I had. So really proud of this. And I, I think the Blacksburg Rescue Squad is going to be really proud of their new rig. So um, we might film this part. We might not, but this is going to go to the powder coater next. It's going to be powder coated satin black to match the rest of the rig here and it'll be bolted back on and given to them. But take it next week off. Hopefully this will be powder coated during that time. And then when we come back in January, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, bye. Hi everyone, Merry Christmas. In real time, it is December 26th and uh, finally done, completely done. Other than powder coating, all the fabrication is finished. This morning, I did a few small things, finalized some bracketry. This is gonna be for a switch for the light that mounts here later, so Tom can drill that. Um, we've got our, our mounts for our basket. <clears throat> we've got all of these guys, all the nuts on the backside of here have been welded captive, so these are all easy to assemble. We've got our uh, pad eye for attaching the basket. Tack nuts, light clearance. So I clearance the shelf right here for the light that sits here. Plate on back of shelf, conduit and corner added, a little conduit right here because all the wires are gonna be coming from all over the cage right to this corner, so that'll help Tom. Shelf ergonomics, I rounded over some corners here on the shelf, making sure they're gonna put this rubber stuff on the bottom protect those edges, protects people's heads from those edges rather. And then aluminum body fix. So when this thing, I'm about to take, I'm about to take the whole cage off. And powder coaters unfortunately are closed this week. Bit of an oversight on my part, but I kind of figured they'd be open. I mean, I'm gonna be closed this week after today. So I guess it's a bit foolish to assume, but anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get this off because I've got to fill some holes in the aluminum body. I've got to pull out a dent right there. Yeah, very few things, but I want to get it off anyway. So we're gonna unbolt it, pull it off with a forklift, and then it'll be off. Wow, I know. By the way, comments saying uh, shaky camera work. Sorry, I'm a fabricator. I'm a damn good camera operator, but I'm a fabricator first. And, uh, it's a miracle that I can film and work at the same time. Sometimes it feels like I can't. But for those of you complaining about the shaky camera work, sorry. Anywho, I'll put it on a tripod just for you nerds.
So it's Friday night at 6.30. I'm gonna work another few hours and I'm probably gonna come in on Sunday because I'd like for this thing to be ready to go to the powder coater. Uh, first of next week. This thing has to be done today, hell or high water. Here's the cage as it is. Today's the last day we're working on it. Uh -huh. So it's all gotta be done. I'm trying to finish in the next hour or so. All right, what's up nerds? It's Christmas Eve and we're gonna finish this roll cage. This is the end of week three after what I thought was gonna be a one week build. But you know, shit happens, it's all good. And uh, finally done, completely done. Other than powder coating, all the fabrication is finished. Powder coaters unfortunately are closed this week. Bit of an oversight on my part, but I kind of figured they'd be open. I'm exhausted. I'm at the point of uh, mental breakdown. Hey everybody, happy new year. Just want to say thank you so much for watching these the two-part series of uh, building the roll cage for the UTV. It's kind of blown up, so that's exciting. The truck is running behind me right now because I'm taking it to the powder coater uh, up the street. There it is, all nestled in the back of the truck. Got my panels here, and uh, twists and turns is like two blocks that way. So let's go drop it off. I don't know how this footage will be used, but I definitely wanted to take you guys along for the finish and the reveal of this thing. So hopefully they can get in here. Oh. Hopefully they turn it around pretty quick. In real time, it's Monday, day after New Year's, and I'm hoping they uh, hoping they get it done fairly soon so we can see a reveal and you guys can see a reveal. How about that? The guy in the comments of the last video was like, I don't understand how you make any money. It takes you so long to do stuff. I'm like, yeah, because I'm trying to film everything for you guys. <laughs> and I'm running a business and have two guys renting from me and have four projects going on at any given time. So it does take me a little bit to do stuff, but my clients are patient with me and I do top notch work. So take it, nerds. I said, I shouldn't say nerds, it's just one guy in the comments. You know who you are. Let's get to work. is finished at the powder coater. So let's drive up the street and go check it out. I'm so hoping that it's a high quality job because I'd love to keep using twist and turns, one, but two, I am ready for this thing to be out of the shop. So let's take the truck up the street and see how they did. Little backstory on this powder coating shop. It's called Twist and Turns. They're in right down the block from me here in Roanoke. Back when I used to work at Black Dog, we worked with Twist and Turns a lot, developed a really nice relationship with them. And um, when I started Lift Dark, I made a connection with the guys over at CNC Fabricators, and they seemed to be able to turn things around faster and had a bigger capacity for things. So that's why I switched from Twist and Turns to CNC Fab. Uh, but Twist and Turns, when I bid this roll cage project, they came in uh, a lot cheaper. So I'm really hoping that their, the product here that they've done on the cage, the coating is really high quality and they did a nice job because I would love to continue using them. Nice price point and uh, convenient location. So speaking of which, literally just started driving and here they are. So let's see how they turned out. Well, here it is in the flesh. They did a super good job on this thing. They were able to get the powder to lay up in here. Really smooth, really consistent. Really excited. Let's get it loaded up.
This guy. Look at this, huh? Makes me want to like clean the aluminum <laughs> so that it shines up nice. It's just so nice. And it's so nice when you put the finished thing on and it like all the holes line up. All the, the screws are stainless cap screws. Oh, good. They're gonna look real cool, contrast with the black. These are all stainless hex screws. The lights go on, the two red lights in the side. Are you doing the wiring? No, thank God. I think I was going to and Tom was like, saw how much effort it was taking me to get it right. And he goes, I'll do that part. I'm like, I respect you, sir. Thank you. Awesome. 400 bucks this cost. Pretty freaking good. To paint. Powder coat. Powder coat, right. To blast and powder coat. It costs a little more than 400 bucks to make. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> uh, but about 10 times more. <laughs> but I say investment well worth it. There's not another one like it in the world. Yeah. There might be, but I feel comfortable saying that. I'm a big fan of bold proclamations made with no research. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got an hour before lunch. Let's put this thing together. Someday we'll make it on by. Other days we only can try. Either way, no matter what people say. Either way, we're gonna get. Someday we'll make it on by. Someday. Other days we only can try. Either way, no matter what people say. For your soul to master oh. From the moment that you breathe Get to chasing after Yeah All that you want All that you ever dreamed oh. You can make anything Of this life Someday we'll make it all right Other days we only can Someday try Someday we only Either try way, no what people say oh. We're gonna get Yo, my name is Exhibit. Let's see how we pimped your ride. <laughs> Dude, here it is. It's actually done. It's 100%. Well, let's, to be fair, let's just call it 99 just yeah. for the sake of perfection. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, it's not bad. It's not bad. As far as I'm concerned, it's yes, 100%. Yes. Man, what a journey. I mean, we're basically sitting here at the end of four weeks. People give me a lot of crap in the comments about like how long it takes me to build a project and how I'm in business and how I make any money. I don't think you guys understand that like, I do like five things at once all the time. So it's, yeah, no one's gonna, I mean, 
with the overhead and everything of a shop, no one could build one thing a month for four grand and like stay in business. Even though technically, if I lived very conservatively, it would technically be possible. There's a lot of expenses involved here. Thousand dollars worth of materials, $500 powder coating bill. So yeah, we gotta keep moving. Trust me, I'm doing other shit. That's why it takes me so long. Well, I mean, there's nothing over there no, right no, now. It but. looks like there's a lot over there. <laughs> but I mean, to overview, if you're just now tuning in, uh, we built the cage structure out of inch and a half DOM 095 wall tubing. Just like a roll cage, we built it to roll cage specs where the main hoops are a continuous, continuous piece of metal and then everything else is notched and fully welded. Uh, we TIG welded all the joints. Uh, roof panel is a solid sheet of 14 gauge steel that I cut out with the uh, Shop Saber plasma cutter. All these side panels are all 11 gauge steel that were also cut on the Shop Saber. Uh, using that clever trick that I learned in Fusion to like replicate a shape so that I could create these lattice work deals. We got the, the side flashers mounted in. We got a cut out here for a handhold so you can get up in there. Uh, we've got these four boxes with the uh, flasher flashing lights on the back. We've got this shelf that's now permanently mounted for the AED, the defibrillator. Of course, you see we've got the Stokes basket in place. That's held in with these two brackets and sort of gravity, basically. Uh, and we've got this, this uh, loop here that we made so Tom can figure out some sort of attachment here. The whole cage is attached to the existing cage via these four tabs that have captive nuts welded behind them and these stainless fasteners so they'll never rust integrating the existing um, sort of mesh door, whatever you call that. Smart. And then uh, everything's bolted to the existing aluminum body with a bunch of stainless 3 8 fasteners. And everything rests on these two inch angle rails, um, which I mean, the only way this could get ripped off is if it takes the aluminum body with it. So pretty pleased with that. We remounted the uh, fire extinguisher. So that's back, I had to move it over like half an inch, but that's back where it is. Um, there was a big dent down here. Knock that out, straighten that up. Yeah, I got powder coated satin black, twist and turns up the street, did a phenomenal job. They turned it around in about 10 days, which for this quality and this complexity of a, of a piece is awesome. And then when I brought everything back, everything like reassembled exactly the way I took it apart, which is credence to being able to build something on the vehicle itself. I'm lucky that they have two of these UTVs and they were able to leave this one here with me so I could do all this. But like cut to the before shot, mm -hmm. what it looks like, what it looked like before with that weird aluminum bar and what it looks like now. I mean, Tom wanted this thing to be, you know, one of a kind, stand out, make a statement. And um, I think we've achieved that. I think it do. So Tom will be here very soon. I might back this thing out and take a victory lap down the street. But uh, yeah, this is, this is a portfolio piece. I'm gonna take the nice camera out, take a bunch of nice photos, and uh, see if anybody else out there wants me to build something crazy mm -hmm. for their UTV. UTVs are great because they fit in the shop. Yeah, they Although go. the guys are probably tired of walking around. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest project gets the right of way, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, we, I mean, I don't know if there is an answer to this, but. We did have some questions about this being open. Oh yeah, well this was sort of just a concession made between Tom and I. The original design of the cage uh, was not even gonna have a roof panel or these pieces. This whole section was just gonna be open. So upon, and then again, uh, cheers to Tom's brilliance, really. He sort of designed all this for me uh, in a way. Like he, he understood that to bend a metal panel in this compound curve right here would be really hard. So he, we decided to find the furthest forward point where we could put in this 90 degree or 80 degree bend to create. So that way this is all one single plane. Mm. Well, not one plane technically, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. One piece. And then, you know, some real effort could have been spent filling this with like expanded metal or cutting together some pie shapes to create this like compound curve, but Tom wasn't too concerned and he, he didn't ask me to do it. And at the rate that the project was going, I didn't really feel like uh, nominating myself for more work. Yeah. Considering, you know, we just, if they need it back, I gotta move on to other stuff. 
So it might be something where they can use some self tappers and some sort of mesh or maybe some sort of, maybe even plexiglass, you know, to, to create a barrier, but something that can be formed and shaped. I don't know. You know. I didn't see it as anything necessary. Right, basically it wasn't, wasn't deemed necessary. Uh, we tried to get close to the original, but you know, this is brand new powder coating and this has been weathered for a yeah, while. And when this gets weathered, it'll probably- I wasn't gonna good. replicate the uh, tree marks. <laughs> yeah. I'll, let them, I'll let them do that. <laughs> That'll happen naturally. Yeah, all the fasteners are quarter 20 stainless uh, pan head Allen fasteners. So they look, they look nice, I think. They kind of have that rivet effect and the uh, whole thing's removable still. So the, the UTV gets ruined or Whatever, the whole thing can be unbolted and as long as they recreate the same aluminum body underneath, it can be reattached. Now this is interesting, we have to follow up on this with Tom, but we got a comment on the video saying that somebody was was the one responsible for building this aluminum bed. Yeah, I saw that. I wasn't sure if they were talking about this exact same I think UTV, so. but I think so. I saw that, I, I, don't think, I, guess, I don't guess I responded, but yeah. Well, no, because I mean, it's hard to verify, but. Right. I, have to, I looked them up and it looks like they build UTV Aluminum bed. Cool. So, yeah. Well, shout out to the fellow that watched the yeah. video that actually built this aluminum uh, bed in the first place. Mm -hmm. I love YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a main line to the rest of the world. It really is. So cool. But you know, this, listen, super proud with how it came out. Uh, I'm happy that they can have it back and it be put in service. They use this thing in parades when it's not being used to save lives. So there will be a lot of eyeballs checking out this work. And, uh, Almost makes me want to put a lift art yeah. studios tag <laughs> I was about somewhere. To say. <laughs> Graffiti on it. But uh, just the traction that this video has gotten is a yeah. good enough business card. So thank you guys for watching, first off. And uh, this is what we do here high end, weird, custom, exactly what the customer wants. So I feel good about it. I'm happy to put my stamp on it and I'll be able to sleep at night, finally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Woo! Pretty good timing, wow. Well, work on the sides. Oh, well, I do too. I think it looks extremely sweet. Your design. Well, you made it. Go us. I'm very, very happy with it. Okay. okay, I need you to do me a favor. Yes, sir. I'm going to pull this thing up. Okay. And you see the chains up front? Yeah. Hook it and then back into it. Well, I mean, I'll, do, I'll, I'll show you where I want them hooked. We'll get these out of the way. Thank <laughs> you. 
someone else yeah well we've documented it taking a bunch of pictures order number two as we discussed como arigato yeah, I had to beat on people to get that to go. Well, I certainly appreciate your fight for me. I'm sorry. Well, sorry you had to. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I'm used to pissing people off. <laughs> well, Trust somehow me. you haven't pissed me off. Yeah, it's yet. a valuable skill. <laughs> In fact, I'm worried no it's comment. the other way around. But yes. Thanks again, man. Tom, you take care. I really appreciate and it. And we'll man. maybe see you again. Yeah. And you take care oh, too, sir. It's a pleasure, yes, Thank sir. you for trusting me with the project. Yeah. No, no, I, like I said, I think it turned out extremely well. Yeah, I'm very pleased with it. And uh, I think everybody should be happy. Again, take care. Yep. Tom. Drive safe. Thank you, man. Bye-bye. I'll see you next Christmas. I'll come let you know what I want. <laughs> you do that. It's out of here. You feel done? I feel done. He's happy. I'm happy. I'm paid. Whew. Joke's on you, nerds. I made some money on that <laughs> All right, see you next time. Bye. Well, uh, seriously, uh, the channel's been growing like crazy. Uh, I've been working my ass off to, well, fab projects for people that I'm proud of and that they like, but also take you guys with us. So thanks for dealing with, uh, you know, shaky camera work, <laughs> uh, timelines with gaps. <laughs> Walker's been really putting in a lot of effort to, uh, fill in the holes, let's say, that I leave for him. So uh, thank you for all the support. Like, subscribe, comment. I'm terrible at replying to comments, but Walker tries to help me and I'm gonna sit down when I can and catch up. But, um, oh, if you like that mag drill that we reviewed or that anvil that we reviewed, uh, the affiliate links are down here for vivor.com. Uh, we get kickback from that. So if those two things are something you're looking to do, uh, or buy for yourself. I think you can do VV Pro for some money off and use the affiliate link and we get a kickback. Thank you for the support. Until next time, uh -huh. this has been Lift Arc Builds at Lift Arc Studios. What a clean ending. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>